Hello chums! Welcome to another fabulous mailbag episode where we get to read out all the hate and quite a lot of love from you all that <laughs> listen to this podcast. This week's topics vary wildly, right? Uh, and we'll get right down to it. We're back some... on uh, Wisconsin, Pes Pennsylvania, and uh, what's the other one? Zoo. We had non-charitable donations to Zoo. So we did have quite a few Wisconsin emails, quite a few Pennsylvania emails, and no references to the zoo, but I have culled all references to those from this week's emails because we need to move on. I feel we need to move on. We've had okay. quite a lot of Wisconsin and also the Wisconsin emails, God bless them, they are getting longer and longer and longer and more and more tedious, pictures attached, statistics. We should make them into a book and sell it. Yes. Why visit Wisconsin and just have all these emails stapled in there? Because honestly, yeah. it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, would you like that me to just work. start at, uh, we've got one from February the 9th and then we'll work our way up to current day? Shall we do oh that? Oh my god, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, here's one. Uh, this is from Al. Uh, Hi, Perry and Sips and Lewis. I've just listened to the most recent mailbag number 10, so this was in February, where the second person talked about getting into a car accident while listening to Triforce, and this has brought back a memory from a few years ago. I was listening to Triforce on the way into work and witnessed a quite bad car accident occur right in front of me. I stayed on the scene, and when the trooper got there, I told him I had dash cam footage of the accident. While I played it back for the trooper, who was very bold, I realized with horror that in the background of this terrible accident, Sips and Lewis are quite clearly talking about and making fun of bold people and making <laughs> fun of Pyrian for being bold. <laughs> the, the, troop, the trooper didn't say anything, but there is no way he didn't also hear Pyrian talking about how people see boldness as a failing and Lewis commenting on how there isn't a bold acceptance movement. So oh, <laughs> man. Fair play to that trooper for keeping Fair it together. Fair play to that and shout trooper, out, yeah. And shout out to that bold brother out there riding the roads and keeping people safe. Well, you don't know how many bold brothers are out there, because anyone wearing a hat, they might be a secret oldie uh, you know, underneath you, you know, trust me. You, you so know. if you see a guy in a hat, give him a wink, P-Flat. Yeah, I will. Saying. I know what's going on under there, brother. <laughs> yeah. A knowing wink. I'll just tip my bold pate towards him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you often right. wear your... Um, your bloody hat. I that's because like it's cold, just... dude. Like, no. that's the thing. I, I think people think bold people are trying to cover up. Uh, believe me, it's normally just much colder and the top of your head has no insulation at all. So you're like a bear. It's like a, a loft just open to the elements. So you've got to right. stick a hat on there sometimes because it, it, it does. I guess as you get wrinklier, it becomes more like a radiator as well. <laughs> your, you know, your top of your ribbed. head doesn't get wrinkly. It can, well, it can though, right? <laughs> no, if you look, look at Dave Bautista, right? Dave Bautista has a wrinkled head because he has a, there's a condition that he's got that makes the top of his head wrinkly. But if you look at most old, I mean, Patrick Stewart, the top of Patrick Stewart's head isn't. Oh all my wrinkled. god. Yeah, and he's true, incredibly yeah. old. It, it doesn't wrinkle. It's not. It's not that kind of skin. I don't know how. Why. How incredibly old are we talking here? It can't be that. Oh, old. he's in he's his eighties, dude. Are Patrick you serious? Stewart. I'm almost certain. Patrick Stewart is. He is eighty-two. So, eight, oh my god, man. Yeah, I've been watching Star Trek Picard. I think it's pretty, pretty okay. It's pretty okay. No one's yeah. Star Trek it, but, Picard, but it gives you a bit of a. It's just nice to see old John Luke Picard do it his is. stuff. He is, he is very old in it though. He is, he is. But if, yeah, so if you look at a picture of him, like a very recent picture, you'll see that. He, I mean, first of all, he's not that wrinkly because obviously he's an actor, so he's looked no, after himself yeah, and everything. Yeah. But there, there are like some tiny creases and things, but not comparable to. The rest of an old person's face you would associate with being very wrinkly. Right. His is not that bad. So, this is from Callum. I'm Callum. I'm a civil engineer in Cambridgeshire, and I listen to you guys prattle on when I'm working from home to combat the boredom. Oh, thanks, Callum. Uh, within my job is something called a civil parking enforcement scheme, which is hundreds of complaints about double yellow lines having rubbed off, signs in the wrong places, etc. Each of these needs a separate PDF, and I've come to hate Adobe Acrobat with a passion. My question oh my is, God. is there any other programs you guys have had to use over the years that you now cannot stand? Um, oh, wow. Uh, what's, uh, what's the Microsoft uh, search engine one? It used to Bing. be in Word. <laughs> Bing. I can't, uh, I, can't, I can't stomach using that uh, program at all. Like, but have you just... had to use it? No, but it, I, it always so think, wants uh, me to use it, though. That's true. It, it does keep saying. Mm, it keeps saying, like "Why don't you there? make me your default?" And uh, and in my mind, I'm always saying, "I would never make you my default." <laughs> exactly. 
You're not even I'm my so side angry bitch. that yeah, I'm so angry that you even tried to launch. What made you launch in the first place? But there's no way I'm making you my default. Do you know what I hate is you, you know on Windows 10 there's a little arrow that lets you show all the minimized applications. The sort of you you when you when you close them they minimize to the taskbar, but they don't actually minimize as like a little pop up thing at the bottom. They're just programs that are resident. In the bottom right, there's a tiny up arrow. You click that, it shows you. For me, it's got Steam and a couple of other things there and Google Drive and stuff like that. Sometimes you go to click on that and this little circle barges into the way and you click it and it shows you like local news and, and like the weather and shit like that. It's some kind of oh location based thing. If you have to trick me into clicking a button, that you, your program can fuck off. Stop yeah. it. I, yeah. I, I don't like it. Don't I hate fool me into, into opening it. I never, the only reason I ever open it is by mistake. So stop it. I, I yeah, I had um a button on my phone, my old phone that that was like a the Samsung button or whatever. Right. It would bring up the Samsung page or whatever, but but it would have the most oh just uh, just crap news articles like tabloidy news articles yeah. and like useless information and adverts and like I, I, there's a lot of that right too like with um I hate launchers for games <laughs> yeah. every fucking game has a, some sort of launcher Ubisoft is one of the worst ones as well yeah. trying to get your games like I hate anything where you you're logged in on Steam and then you have to log in to the fucking some oh. launcher to get into the game and then once you're in the game you have to log into some sort of another account oh, and you're like I hate holy all that. fucking shit how many yeah, layers and each one has got like adverts for them other games in them yeah and like uh, so it's a nightmare honestly like for me like I, I obviously use everything right steam and there's things about steam i hate there's things about epic games launch i hate there's things about spotify that really get on my nerves just about just like how it never properly like doesn't it doesn't it's just a complete it's just like it, it looks like spotify hasn't changed or steam in some cases in like the last <laughs> seven or eight years and right. it's still got these like incredibly irritating lack of features or like poorly functioning features yeah i mean steam is great generally right it's a whole mess of fact you know it's got so many things you can do in it right it's got the, the marketplace and the fucking workshop and, yeah discussions you know, all of, and everything all yeah, yeah. And there's forums in there it's this, it's incredibly i mean it's, it's i'm amazed it's all hung together but it does feel like this patchwork thing that's been slowly it feels like <laughs> a lot of legacy shit tucked in there um for sure. And I, I always wonder with programs like this, how much time are they like just just patching problems and trying to make everything work together? And how much are they just saying, fuck all that, just keep coming up with new ideas? So it's, it's like that balance, isn't it? Like when a game's a couple of years old, they keep working on new features rather than fixing their old problems. Um, yeah. Dota's still got a ridiculous number of bugs and weird interactions tucked in there that but they're still working on the new patch and new heroes and stuff so yeah i think every everything the more you use it the more you realize its failings but because that's true of everything i guess you know it all kind of evens out but there are certain things yeah. that are worse bing that little circle and launches those are our three for you there I, yeah <laughs> i love love i love discord i love google drive um, right. I use Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets all the sheets all the time. Love them. Can't. I, I'm just. I. I think I spend more time in Google Sheets than anything else. Um, any other program. Thousands of hours of me like looking, like making, putting stuff in. Just little pouring boxes. over spreadsheets, playing Eve God, Online, and it's other so games satisfying. that require you to. I have. play them in my head, though. I play these right. games in my head right. now. Um, I've been sort of trying to. Last year, me and Ben tried to make like a miniatures game. Um, and we're still working on it, but it's it's we tried it, we we played it a couple of times. We didn't think it was all that much fun, and so we need to re sort of do it. Do you know what I mean? I think that's that's a bit demoralizing when something is not as you expect it. It's, it's a similar thing with art as well. Like you have a picture in your mind, and actually, I've been using a lot of this AI art generation, like Mid Journey lately. Yeah, which is on Discord, by the way. Pip Flex, I can show you it. It's really it, you'll be amazed how okay. it works. The thing is, it won't create things in your mind, but it will create amazing things. So you'll put in something like you know a really specific prompt, like um, Mars Explorer robot with three wheels and red and blue coloring, right? And you'll have a picture in your mind of what you're looking for, and it will create something really cool. But not what you imagined. <laughs> right? well, Never I, what so you that, imagined. That, this is like my favorite point in AI when it's not quite right, but it has a go. Like I find that quite interesting. Have you seen yeah. these AI generated conversations between I think it's Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro? They're all over Twitter. <laughs> and they generate right. these conversations and it's like it's got the voices and it's got them and it's it's just bizarre. And it's it's 
if it was developing actual real sounding conversations, it wouldn't be as interesting. The fact it's slightly scuffed is what makes it funny. So I think it's well, but here's the, this is here's the, best the thing, point. right? A lot of people are listening to these podcasts, like our podcast, in the background. They don't really care. It's just noise to them. It's like right. song lyrics. It's like so when you sing, no one really listens to the lyrics. Well, some people do, but but most people just have it on and it flows over you and it's a rhythm or, mm. or it lulls you to sleep. It, they're not really saying anything intelligent in a lot of these podcasts. <laughs> not, and neither are we, right? Not like us. So. <laughs> You could well, just speak like, for yourselves. I mean, yeah. we've got enough of our podcasts now that we could just AI generate this thing. Maybe this one is. We but should try I, I, that. That would be amazing. Just see what what it comes up with. Yeah, if there was a yeah. way to do that, we should fully do that. I think we could give it the podcast. I don't know if it can transcribe accurately enough because there's no like text version of these. But it's podcasts. only a matter of time. Oh yeah, right? we could say generate um, a podcast. Here are the old ones. Give us a new one. We should definitely do that if that's a you're st- it's starting to get to a point where you're not sure whether it's it's just a bad podcast or it's it's uh, AI generated, <laughs> right. right? I wonder with, how many emails AI PFLAX would generate because uh, I got quite a few this week. Because, yeah, uh, it's, I think it's sometimes hard to tell, like especially if you don't know or have the context. Like on TikTok, I've seen a few of these where it is like that Joe Rogan stuff talking. Right. And I was, I was like, is this a clip from the podcast or is this <laughs> something someone's written and they're using the voice synthesizer or is it something AI generated that's being used by the, the voice synthesizer, right? And so it's... And I think you, what you can even do, though, is have a little bit of tailor-made, a little bit of mm. each, right? A little bit of tweaking here and there to bring it up to, you know, foolable quality, right? And I think people fall for the dumbest shit anyway, right? True. Like, anyway, uh, sorry to just go off topic. Where were we? What were we, what were we going, talking I was going to talk about Kieran and his, uh, his visit to Hooters. Um, okay, oh, so sure, man. let's get back on. Two of my friends are at Liverpool Uni and I went up for the weekend. We thought it would be funny to grab some food from the infamous Hooters to see if it lived up to the weird and creepy hype we'd heard about it. Yes. It did. Nice. There were multiple groups of around 40 to 50 year old men. Yeah. Offence taken. Yeah. That seemed to be taking the restaurant very seriously. Well, of course they are. Naturally. And we would frequently overhear things like, look at the tits on her being said. Yeah. But what surprised us the most were the amount of lads with their girlfriends slash wives. Oh, um, that, that is, is interesting, surprising. yeah. And um, the actual service was very Americanized to the point where the waitresses were one decibel away from shouting at us. Yes. All in all, very pervy atmosphere, average food, but as far as sports <laughs> bars go, they were showing almost every sport imaginable on one of their 60 TVs. Mm. Thank you, Kieran. Glad Holy to hear crap. it was... Uh, acceptably creepy yeah interesting do they have male waiters with like pouches and stuff no i mean it's only fair though to consider that well you say that but i think there's a big difference between uh men and women and obviously some fellow i'm I'm talking about heterosexual typical men not not everybody um if you have a place that has women hardly wearing anything i think blokes are comfortable there and women tolerate it whereas if you went to a restaurant where it was all blokes walking around with just banana slings and uh all their you know their muscles out blokes would immediately feel uncomfortable and and leave because we're, we're more fragile than women i guess in some ways well do you remember when they had those shirtless guys outside abercrombie and fitch no <laughs> so were, you, they- were you down there first in line on that like, that did that occasion. make? Did that like? No, it was. It was a very common thing, right? Like, um, back in. 15 I do not years remember ago. it. I do not remember. Yeah, they it. had like topless greeters kind of thing. Wow. Um, in in this country, I don't know if there were. I may, maybe in a maybe in the flagship stores, but it was definitely American thing. Anyway, I did that. Did that stop? Guys going in? No idea. Having the hunks? If anyone knows, know let if us it know. Did. Go ahead and email in if you've got experience of that. Or if you, you think were a clothes shop would want to show off people. clothes you as would. well. Yeah, than... showing off topless people is like, you don't need clothes to look good. That's the message I'm getting from, from this greeter. It doesn't really make sense. Maybe it's, if you don't look as good as me naked, you need to buy a shirt to cover up your fat, <laughs> ugly body. You're not allowed could... to say that. Yeah. You said <laughs> two, <laughs> two words that you're not Too allowed banned. to say anymore. Yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to re-edit this podcast and replace it with uh, enormous uh, and un- unkind and, uh, <laughs> and bloated, ungenerous. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not allowed to say those. Things. Uh, this is from uh, from. Well, they call themselves Dave Yognor, but uh, I, I I know that's not their name. Um, I didn't know be. the origin of all that, by the way. Um, no, I was stri- someone on on my Discord is called Dave Yognor, and I was like, what What is this? And they explained to me it was uh, someone emailed into the the Yog Pod, one of the very early episodes of the Yog Pod. So there's a lot of Yog's lore that I'm completely unaware of. I well, do it's, apologize. It, yeah, it's an old. Well, basically, it comes from a time when everyone had to name their 
community, right? Yeah. They had to be called something. The oh, the dog squad or like like dumb dumb shit. Like everyone had everyone had to identify. Big shout as, out to the dog squad. Oh, Woof, 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 yeah, woof, exactly. Woof. Best community and on everyone the net. had their own, like I don't know, like everyone's self-identifying and naming their community, and we we were joking about it. But also, I think we wanted we were coming up with ideas, and so anyway, so it's an old reference, and that's what I, I think me and Simon decided was the um what was what people had to call themselves. Dave Yognor, right? Um, gotcha, gotcha. Right. So, but we don't have a thing for Triforce, which when we don't, well, do no, we? we we absolutely do. Yeah, the, the tiny, tiny, tiny penis have... havers or, or oh, anything vagina okay, havers. We do. Yes, we do. right. Yeah. Good. Well done. Tiny penis havers. So, do you want to hear a it's double a a double email from this lad? This is a double email that references things that happened before. Okay. Um, is it like okay? I don't like those movies where this. This is a double, double header. This is like the old A movie and the the B movie and the A movie. Anyway, um, so uh, I'm a salesman for medical alerts. Those little things where you push a button and. Oh money. yes. Yeah. Um. So uh, medical alerts. Yeah. So you know the I've fallen and I can't get up kind of thing. So if you're elderly or you're disabled in some way and you have a fall, if you can't. So here we go. Um, it's really rewarding line of work. I hear stories all the time of people who fell and were on the ground for hours, crawling bit by bit to their cell phone, or were on the floor for days until someone came to check on them. Those are he, he's that's not the rewarding part. He's saying that what's rewarding is giving people these medical alert things because you can wear it around your neck like a sort of necklace, and if you have a fall, it's right there. You just push a button and it alerts the authorities that an elderly or a vulnerable person has had a fall and you should rush and help. Yeah. Um, so some statistics. This is because um, uh, I think he's saying that your your mum had a fall, Lewis. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Lewis's mum did have oh, a fall. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. Well, she fell over. She she didn't have a fall. She slipped and fell on her ass when we were walking down Park Street. Right. Bit but different. my mum's very fit and a yoga teacher, and it wasn't wasn't like she was stuck there or anything. Right. <laughs> Everybody I did, just like walking said, around her. Like the I said at the time, if it wasn't like uh, a concern, you know, it wasn't like right. she's now got a knee, she's now in a wheelchair. She's got to have a knee replacement. No, she had um, a fall, but maybe not like a uh, first alert. So fall. obviously, the, the falls. My mum had a fall where she fell on a path, right. picking up my youngest from playgroup, and she gave herself a massive black eye and everything. Holy! Dif di it was very bad, but different kind of fall. We're talking about. Elderly people that live alone falling over and and not yeah. being able to get up. No, that, that's yeah, the kind and of and there's nobody around to within exactly. earshot to help them. Yeah. So here are some facts uh, about uh, falling. After falling one time, your chance of falling again doubles. Um, which is I'm not sure why, but apparently it does. People who have received help within one hour have about eighty to nine percent chance, eighty to ninety percent chance of making a full recovery. After only thirty minutes of being on the ground, your blood vessels can start to com become compressed, and you can get numb limbs. Holy crap! Seventy percent of all falls in the home happen in the shower slash bathroom. That's why you should have walk-in showers for the elderly. I don't. I mean, I know that you get those old people baths where there's a little door that opens up, so you can get in, and then you drain the water, open the door, and get out. I'm just saying, just get a shower, walk-in shower with a chair. That's what we got. My mum. Falling is the leading cause of, of fatal and non-fatal injuries among older adults. Is this going to get worse as well? What, falling? Because, More falling. Well, because we all have, like, online friends now rather than, like, people we live with. Mm. And, like, if I if I slipped in the shower and, like, got knocked unconscious, I think no one would find me for, like, three or four days, dude. Like... No one texted me at the weekends. Really? I texted you this weekend. <laughs> so you, so I, I messaged you a video explaining that meat is actually not that bad for the environment. That's true, but I didn't reply. No, you no. didn't. Which is why and... I, I called the the ambulance. <laughs> I said, my friend Lewis, he always responds immediately to my messages. He must have had a nasty fall. I don't though. I don't. I'm a bad replier. Yeah, you are. Like I worried about like um. I, I think that when they find me, I'll have been dead for like a week or something, and no one would have known. Do you know what yeah, I mean? but uh, you know, look, you're, you're young and vivacious. Uh, you don't need to worry about these kind of things yet. I'd say you might be uh, like I'm that woman about who, was, who I'll be dead. was dead for care. ten years in her flat, and uh, and nobody nobody realized. Remember, she just she didn't really have like that many friends, or it was just like a, this weird sequence of events where basically she probably died of some sort of heart condition, mm. sitting there watching TV, and nobody noticed for. 10 years. Wow. I would imagine I died on like let's say a Thursday morning after Triforce, right? Yeah. I just I I st I, I got up late, I did the podcast, I had a shower, I slipped over, banged my head, bled out, I died in the in the shower, right? right. I'm dead. Now, 
Friday, I don't do anything, so no one would know. Saturday, again, I don't do anything. I've not got nothing on the Saturday, no one would know. Sunday, nothing, no. Monday, I've obviously usually do Armed Tribunals, the stream, but that's on hiatus now. So again, people would think, oh, Lucy, I've taken the day off. So again, no one would contact me, no one would know. Tuesday, I'd miss the morning recording, right? And people would be like, oh, Lewis must have overstepped, or he's not here, why isn't he here? Like, pfft. Don't worry about it. We'll just do it without him. Wednesday, same thing. And maybe at that point, someone will be like, hmm, okay, Lewis hasn't checked in. What's going on? But again, they probably just think, oh, maybe he's on holiday or something. Thursday, Triforce would happen. You guys would turn up. And if I don't turn up to Triforce within like five or 10 minutes late, you guys just think, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe he maybe he can't do it today. Maybe he told us that he and was going to miss it yeah. and we forgot, right? So you'll go away. Then Friday will happen again. Monday, Saturday will happen again. Sunday will happen again. Monday will happen again. Tuesday will happen again. And then, then I think, then I think Ben. You're saying be like, like okay. two weeks, maybe. I think it's, I think it's going to be two weeks right. before but first of all, calm someone down. Calm down. worries about right. me. The, the, if you want, I, I, I will text you every every hour on the hour. <laughs> okay. and, if, and if you don't respond, I'll, I'll call the ambulance. Okay, right. so we can set that up as a, a just set an alert on your phone, and if you don't push the button, it alerts every ambulance immediately in the Bristol area, and they'll all zoom to your house. I think maybe I need to do more, like get more. If I miss more bookings, <laughs> that is more but likely the, the, for but me you're to be young, found sooner. You're young relative to the kind of people this guy's talking about. I don't think people are going to raise the alarm because you miss an appointment or even several. So I, I think the thing is, as people get older. You naturally think, oh, they might have had a fall or they might be sick. Like if I called my mum and she didn't answer, I'd assume she was out. But if I called her a couple more times and she didn't answer, especially throughout the day, then I would think something was up. I'd call my sister and I'd say, have you heard from mum? And then I'd maybe talk to her neighbours. But I, I would I would start to worry relatively quickly because she's in her 70s. But And she's on her own. And yeah. she's on her own. But if, if you didn't answer, I'd just think, that's just Lewis. He often doesn't answer his phone. I routinely don't answer my phone. People don't just assume I've died. So I think we're not yet at that age. Well, no, bracket. but you were in a house with four people. Yeah, right? but they don't I care, did... Lewis. They let just me die like, up here. I'm, I'm obviously in a bit of a weird scenario, being you know single on my own kind of. But but at the same time, I think a lot of people are like a lot of people self-employed. A lot of people do their work for themselves, or like. But maybe they always have. Maybe it's no different to anything else. I mean, I guess in the past, if you lived in a a, a wooden lodge you'd built yourself out in the wilds, people must have just been found dead all the fucking time. You know, you, yeah. you have a heart attack and bang, and then they just find this this lodge with the hogs running crazy out the front, and, uh, you know, that's the end of it. So I wouldn't worry about like, it too much. No. All right. Free I house. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you live in uh, in the Wild West, though, and there, and uh, Bounty Hunter comes to your house, your lodge in the middle of nowhere, and shoots you. They wouldn't find your body for years, right? If ever, oh, yeah, easily. in some cases. Yeah. Because it's You'd just not be like, a skeleton. Yeah, they would just and and then they would have to try to investigate what went on. They would never find it, figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. What if they if they if they if you if they turned up to bounty hunt you and you were already dead? Do you reckon they would they would think fuck? Did this guy already get bounty hunted as someone or you know can I still claim the reward or did he die of natural causes? You'd I have think, to like Sherlock Holmes it, right? I think if you were a bounty hunter and you found the lad dead, you'd like. Uh... Cut off Rush his, back. Cut, cut, yeah, cut off his head, put it in a bag, and zoom back and be like, got him. Here's the head to prove it. Uh, right. And they'd be like, yep, fair enough. And they'd say, they were like, we wanted him alive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you'd say, well, beggars can't be choosers. That's what yeah, I think. That's exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is the, the second, the follow up email is, believe it or not, it was another, this lad also got in a car accident in 2017 while listening to Triforce. Jesus. And there are, there are photos of his car, and the front end is all smushed up. Man. But he's oh, okay. man. Now, when he said medical alerts, yeah. I thought medic alert, which is a little bracelet that yeah, I. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think it is. Um, yeah. No, well, I think they're different. Med Medic Alert is a specific thing in the UK, I think. It's like a little bit of jewellery oh. that you wear that shows your medical Oh, that says if you're diabetic stuff. or whatever. Yeah. So that, that like, if you so, do pass out, they'll know not to give oh, you the okay. certain things or whatever, right? Yeah, okay, so I no, used to I have one I don't think because I'm allergic to all sorts of things. Right. You know? So my parents were very protective of me and they got me one of these things. I think it was one of these things they got me for Christmas or something. But there's, they're not very cool. <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> not very festive either. No. It's not very cool to have this. It's not really it's already a cool piece of jewelry to have, you know, um I think they've tried to theme it up. They've got like different things like like little dog taggy versions and other stuff, um, and belts and things like this. But I feel like um 
<laughs> I feel like I never as a I never as a kid wanted to wear it right anywhere, and I never and I've never really worn jewelry like a- anyway. I'm not really a big jewelry guy. Do you guys wear any jewelry? Do you guys wear? Oh, anything? I do. Yeah, I wear I wear a fair bit of jewelry. Right, like what? Oh. Uh, like necklaces, earrings. Two, I have two necklaces and and two rings. Right. Okay. I okay. have one ring. Just the wedding. That's my ring. wedding ring. Yeah. I I got a I I love gold. I, I really do love gold. I know it I sounds weird. I do. I do love gold. It's just, I, I, <laughs> wow. I love it. I love it. It's, what, it's a what weird a hot thing. take. I know, but I really do love it. The look is of that, it. Is, is, is this a hit to Mrs. It. Flax as well, by the way, all the listeners? The, if you if you got any, if you want to send us anything, <laughs> you know, don't send us like, you know, picture Send Flax a gold like, chain. He wants a gold. <laughs> he wants a gold well, that, that's chain. That's what I got for Christmas. That was my do Christmas present. you know what I love? Gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. It's just magic. It's like magic I'm to me. I'm simple never... like that. I just love it. Yeah. Because that's that's the thing, right, where a content creator mentions one time that they <laughs> oh, no. like Jaffa Cakes or something, and then no, everyone no. sends them yeah. that shit for well, forever. I mean, this is a way to never get sent anything by anybody. <laughs> I, love, I love 10 pound notes. Yeah, you know what I love, God, guys? I love Diamonds. I love diamonds. Um, <laughs> but I, I just love it. The look of it, the fact it never tarnishes because it's like this magical fucking metal. The look, I, I, I go to a museum and you see that, that gold there. It just, it's something about it just calls to me. I, I, if I would basically, if I was some ancient uh, ruler, I would assemble gold. That was it. Just give me gold. Well, I think uh, I don't think you're alone in that. I think a lot of uh, ancient rulers did the same thing. They amassed yeah. um, lots of gold, and some of them wanted to take it with them as well. They, they housed the, yeah. their gold bouillon. I've got and- news for you. You still can. Um, yeah. I have investments in gold right now. Okay. Um, we know about we this. We know all we about, know about it. this. Every We've time. Heard about yeah. We have to hear about the silver gold. and gold. Gold coins. It's, oh, just give them no, to I'm, me. I love gold. You just throw great. them in a box. It's, I'd look great. at it it's every lovely. day. I love having, the, love I, having I, gold. I don't know if this is like uh, personal, but and I won't be too specific, but your your gold is elsewhere, right? It's not like, it's not on, on yeah, hand. You like have to travel you can use. somewhere. I think you said it was in Singapore, didn't you? I was trying not to be specific like uh well there's like there's a company in, in singapore called bullion star okay um where you can buy what happens if you want to parts. move that gold it's your gold like wouldn't you feel like shit you're sitting on the plane and you just got your gold with you or you know like well but these brokers they they have a vault they have they can you can buy and sell it at the current market price uh, so you could you know, so instead of moving it, you would sell it and then maybe just buy more. It's not a good else. idea to keep it in your own house, I guess. <laughs> no, like, yeah, and tell people. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I can quite happily tell people I own gold and silver, but there's none what in my you, house. What if you right. just you know baked I mean? it so, into the walls or something, though? You know, like uh, you, you put it into like a wall cavity or something. You know, they made a sheet of gold and then and then hid it in a wall cavity. Much- much like a lot of investments is, it's not very liquid, right? If you wanted to buy shares be, of the though, company, with the right amount of heat. If your gold goes liquid, yeah, but also you're in big trouble if your, your investment in gold has gone liquid. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it ran out the drains, Mr. Ridley, we're sorry. You, well, it's, it's about, it everywhere. Like, back in the day, if you wanted to buy shares of the company, they would give you share certificates. You'd have to put them in your safe at home, right? And you could ha- you have to take them back to a broker to sell them again. That's not very helpful nowadays. Right. They buy shares digitally and you get it all done through a broker, right? So you sign up to a website and you buy shares through there. And you know, no one questions that. Like it's the same thing with gold uh, these days. You just buy it through other places and it and they store it for you and insure it and you know, and it's it's not it's very it's very kind of right. safe. Or at least as safe as you could imagine. Like someone's it's also quite hard to steal do like a robbery of right. it's very heavy. It's gonna rob a gold vault. Like good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> I've got a I've got a follow-up email here. This is a different email, but believe it or not, it segues beautifully from this conversation. Do you want me to, to read Okay, it? yeah, no, I love a beautiful segue. No, you're gonna figure out how part way through. Just remember we're talking about gold and golden things. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. here here is the, the subject line for the email. Stop me if you don't want me to read this one. Okay. Farting during threesome. Oh good lord. I'm game. Okay. Uh, hope all is well with you. I was listening to a Triforce episode recently in which you discussed threesomes. Yeah. I don't remember this, but sure. And it reminded me of a highly embarrassing story you might enjoy. Please don't use my real name. I do not wish to have this shameful event attached to me publicly. I will not read your name this time. <laughs> no problem, like the, Fred. Like the other guy. I apologize. Okay. Several years ago, I was invited round to another man's house in Reading, a shithole. And on the way over, he messaged me asking if his flatmate could join in. I'd never participated in group sex before, so agreed 
so I can at least say I tried it. Th these are these are going to be three fellas. Sure, so it's, right. It's like a, sure. a gay threesome. Yeah, sure. When I arrived at the flat, I could see that they only had one bedroom. Clearly, they were a couple, but decided to make up a fake story that they were flatmates instead. Whatever. We got on with the task at hand. When, after a while, the flatmate asked if I could go to the shower with just him. I obliged, and the other man stayed in the bedroom. We got into the shower, he turned on the water, then got on his knees and abruptly said, Please piss on my face. <laughs> At least he said please, I guess. Man. Yeah. This this is not something I'd ever done before. This or is since, some fucking I... elaborate ass sex, by the way. I know. Like, uh, I know. Every time I've ever had sex in my life, it's just been like very sort of like in a bed pretty quick. <laughs> You're done. There's never been any like any sort of discussion about it or any like somebody on their knees saying piss on me or anything like that. Like uh We're very dull in I'm, that way, I'm I'd pretty say. I'm pretty basic yeah. in that sense. So yeah. they, they, they go on. This is not something I'd ever done before or since, as I do not see the appeal of pissing on someone in any situation. However, in the moment I thought, why not? What have I got to lose? Alt Unfortunately, I had relieved myself earlier before I came, so my bladder was completely empty. I tried my best to produce the piss he wanted, but could not. Instead, during my straining, I let out an enormous fart. This promptly <laughs> killed the mood. To make matters worse, I then... No, do you know what? <laughs> if he likes piss, he might like farts as well. <laughs> yeah. So you might have actually made his day. Apparently secretly. he didn't. Uh, to make matters oh. worse, I then nervously okay. giggled, stepped backwards, slipped in the water and landed cartoon style <laughs> on my back in the shower. <laughs> I do not think oh. I've ever been so embarrassed wait, wait, in my life. Hang on a sec. I got questions here. So yeah. you're in the shower with another dude. You guys are probably yeah. both got boners. How are you pissing in someone's face with a full boner? I'm guessing he didn't because he's just, you know, he's just in a shower with a bloke. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, they might have just had sex because he's yeah, come from I, the bedroom. So I don't think he's just walking yeah. around with a stonker on all the time. It's like ebbs it quite, and flows. Yeah. I feel like they, they haven't had sex yet at this point, though. Because like, I don't know. Oh, I think they have. No, they they have no listen, if listen, they have to listen. Shower. And maybe, maybe I'm unique in this, but I don't think I am. After I've done the deed, I'm done. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not entertaining anything other than probably just laying there and sleeping for a bit or maybe eating. But you know what I mean? Like if I if I've oh. if I've done the the the, the no, job. No, 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 no. Well, Let's I do the detective it. work. No, no. Here, though, if right? I've done like, the job, there's you... no way I'm still randy enough to entertain pissing in someone's face or anything like that. Like I'm done. But you I don't, don't need a boner be... for that. No, you don't need to be horny. But even then, like like the mood is 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 done at, like after you you've had sex, right? I see what you mean. I'm yeah, not, there's, like, there's an old Japanese yeah, proverb. There's a there's a Japanese word that describes. If I'm horny as hell and I haven't had sex yet, I might you know, be pissing on someone's face or something. Theoretically, <laughs> I never have done before. You know what I mean? Because you're just like, holy shit, like, I, I'm horny. I get it. I'm horny, I'll do anything. I can't wait to have sex. It's called kenjataimu, <laughs> which means a man's post-orgasm state where they become extremely calmed down, lose motivation to do anything, or and are free from sexual desires. Yeah. It's, a, it's Like, right after? It There's no thing. way I'm pissing in someone's face. But you're always told after sex to go and pee in order to clean out the pipes, right. especially women should do sure, it, yeah. right? Yes. And so as a result, maybe you are, you know, you're, you're, you've just had sex, you go into the bathroom, you're ex they're expecting you that to be the perfect chance for you to pee, mm. right? Yeah, but even then, um, but, I'm just like, leave me well, alone. So I, I guess Come in some on, ways, man. like, you know, everybody's, everybody's uh, post-sex uh, feelings differ. Some people are ready to go again in like ten minutes. Oh less my than god! Sometimes, so I need some time uh, to reload. Know. Ten minutes after, <laughs> yeah, well, not much is happening down there. A, ten minutes this later, this lad's I'm having a you. threesome with strangers. Yeah, uh, he just went to their house to just have a threesome. So this lad's were operating on a different, different level. He entirely, is on a so, different so fair operation. Play, fair play. I'm still yeah, in the. I'm still him. in the bed with the sheets covering my genitals. Smoking a cigarette <laughs> and sweaty. Like, I, there's no way I'm in a shower with someone right after or pissing on them or en entertaining any sort of randy behavior. I, that's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? All right. I'm, I question. It. I think you are. I question I think the timeline. Kenja, Kenja Taimu. It says you may feel you've reached enlightenment. You may have consciously <laughs> shut out any sex related information. <laughs> no, it is like that though. I don't know if it's like that for you guys, but like for me it definitely is. Like uh, there's there's like there's a lead up and then you're and then once you're done, you're done. Well, for me anyway, I'm just yeah. done. Ke Kenja means wise man or sage and time oh, yeah. means time. So it's like wise man time. Was it there's a <laughs> I think it was maybe not Seinfeld, but there was a show where uh there was this notion that like if you didn't jack off, the longer you didn't jack off for, your mind would be like 
um i don't know more distracted it sounds like only sunny kind of thing, yeah i think it might have yeah. been though so like uh, in the show i remember the the gag being they didn't jack off for a very long time and they became like a genius through it sort of thing right, right? they were making they just had <laughs> oh, this right. clairvoyance or something about it because they hadn't jacked off for so long and then they finally succumbed to it and jacked off and went back so to just the being way a fucking dumbass like immediately <laughs> i mean i did read i did read an article this guy saying you should stop doing it because it drains your energy and all the rest of what, it what jacking off put stuff off yeah just you should never do it basically i don't know about it's never doing it it's the opposite right it's no but it, it's like some, someone else says you have to do it once a, a, yeah. at least once a week or so i, know. There's, uh, I think there's a healthy for balance every, for everyone criticizing something like oh you should drink coffee because it gives you cancer the other people are like oh you have to drink coffee at least once a week because it gives you energy it's like there's, what, there's some extremes though there's like on the one side there's there's people who just never do it and whatever if that's what they want to do it's fine but then there are there are issues in society now with the access to like pornography and stuff like that and porn addictions that where people are just jacking off like 20 times a day which is like also, terry cruz which is also Probably not healthy. If you're doing that and you enjoy Terry it, Cruz is jacking up twenty yeah, times. Yeah, he, he had a porn full addiction. Full fucking power to you if the, if you think that that's good for you and you're enjoying it. Whatever. But there is a, there's always a healthy medium with all this stuff. There's a healthy healthy medium with uh, with the the amount of time you you play video games with the with the types of food that you eat, your diet. There, there's always like a middle ground, a healthy middle ground, right? Where yeah, uh, yeah. You, you 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 have some sort of self restraint and you're not you're not overdoing it or whatever. Like it, like life is just like that, right? I don't know. This if you're jacking off twenty times a day, that, it's probably just review. too much. Yeah. If you're never jacking off, very maybe that's advice. also too much. You know what I mean? Just jack yeah. off like a couple of times a week or whatever. When you feel like it, some weeks you might not want to at all, and that's fine. And some weeks you might, you know, double up on a day or whatever. That's fine too. But twenty times a day is too much, and never yeah. is use probably own, too much as well. Your, you know what I mean? You, you have yeah, to. Yeah. If your if your dick looks you, you red, need raw, to have, <laughs> you need to hold back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. find yourself smarter than usual as well, and you haven't jacked off, in and a if long it's time, got cobwebs on it. You need to get it out. You don't want Give cobwebs. Get one out quick. I suppose, in summary, no cobwebs, no calluses. That's what we're looking yeah. for. Yeah, right. pretty medium. much. Yeah. All right. All right. This is from Corey. I'm sure you've seen the poll chart going around of which animals American and British men and women think they could fight to the death. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have not we seen went, this. We went, we, no, we did this on the podcast. I we have. So this it, yeah. lad is writing in and saying that a friend of his thought he could easily beat a female deer in a fight to the death. You could never. How the hell are you killing a deer? With like, do you have weaponry? No, unarmed. Okay, there's no Female fucking way. Female deer. They would out, out. They would. They would. Not only would they buck you if you even got close to them, uh, because you're not uh, experienced enough to handle them. They're fast as fuck. They'd be out of there. There would be no fight. Like, yeah, they, but they, they're, they're fighting. So the implication is not that they're going to scoot skedaddle. It's cornered. They are going to fight this for whatever reason. This is so stupid Like when people come up with this shit. I know. Because how, <laughs> like, it's so, such a waste of fucking time. Who cares? Like, <laughs> I, uh, so, uh, I, let's move on. No, I. Oh no, go go ahead. So, well, deers are famous for having a quite a high flea a, a flight um, response. Yes, flight response, they're prey. Right? Yeah, like yeah, they'll they'll be three fields over kind of thing if you try and approach them, and and so, uh, but I uh, so I don't know. I've never seen a deer, a female deer, cornered. It's fucking so how... stupid. I could I could I could beat a shrew, okay? Like, uh, fuck, no problem. I just like you know squeeze it hard and it's dead. Fight right. over. It. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I could I could stamp on an otter. <laughs> yeah. No, you fucking those things are. Vicious, man, I'm telling you. They're not vicious See, after I've shit. stomped on it very quickly. <laughs> uh, I, I remember in Singapore, I told you guys this lad got attacked I by I could kick a hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, where are we going Please with this? Please listen. Where does this, this, don't, this go? don't hurt the shrew and the hedgehog. No, the of course not. Let, I would never. I'm saying I could. I'm not saying the I hedgehogs would. Hedgehogs are one of my favorite animals. I love hedgehogs. They're yeah, so me sweet. too. They're anyway. great. That'd be really easy to fight to the death, though. I think they're like... <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> as no, well. they've got the spikes, dude. you got to watch out. Yeah, but I mean, fucking who cares? you got a pair of shoes on. They're dead. Like, 
doesn't matter. No, you're naked. Oh, you're talking. Okay. Fuck it. Where are these rules you, now? Like, could Jesus you imagine Christ. walking into a hospital with like covered in like hedgehog spines, <laughs> naked, <laughs> you're like totally blood? Naked. You're yeah, just like, had a really like, rough fight. <laughs> it's like the end of an action movie. <laughs> you should see the hedgehog. I got him. I got him. <laughs> well done, Mister Forsyth. Uh, sadly, you'll never walk again. It was worth it. It was worth it. Uh, this is from a Mister Davidson. Uh, this is somewhat related to the Wisconsin thing, but an attack instead on me making an attack on the East Midlands and Sheffield. So oh my God! Okay, we've shifted Holy the goalpost slightly. We're moving all over there. Um, We're on a world tour of yeah, in- we insulting. Are. Places now. I attacked Sheffield. This directly attacked Sheffield. According, I to think any time Flax attacks a, a a town or region, it's some somehow to do with football, though, right? Especially in England. <laughs> I don't think Flax <laughs> is commenting on a place in England outside of the context of football, right? It's a big fact, yeah. for sure. Um, so I, I apparently I, I claimed that Sheffield was blighted by poverty and decay. And uh, I did I did add a disclaimer, a disclaimer that it was 10 years ago, so fair enough. Sure. Uh, there's been a massive resurgence in Sheffield, apparently. Fuck me. It was named one of the coolest places to live by the Sunday Times in 2023. Right. Uh, it's got a university in the world top 100, prestigious roster group. Sheffield Hallam University was awarded University of the Year. Uh, and they go on to say 7% of the city's population is employed in the creative industry, etc., etc., etc. So things are looking no, good Why is Sheffield. the local tourist board always like so ready to take up arms against uh, our podcast? <laughs> For every fucking place in the world as well. Like, holy shit. Sheffield, look, I nearly went to uni there. I heard the uni was good. Um, A a few of my friends went there. They they were all right. I think it's probably all right. They make steel and, and like, cutlery, probably. I think they used to make steel. I don't know if they do anymore. Sheffield steel? Is it EU protected? I think they stopped. Look, you're very forgettable. Sorry. Dude. There's a there's and... a really big uh, <laughs> underground bunker data center for the bank I used to work for in Sheffield. I don't know if it's wow. still there, but it was like state of the art. Like weather, it was go. like totally weatherproof. Like um, it had really, it's probably oh, secret, millions so of servers and stuff. No, I don't. Well, I don't know if it's overly secret. I mean, there's... I suspected the bunker was originally designed to protect people from the residents of Sheffield. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Why it's so effective. Oh, man. Uh, this is from Brandon. This is a weird one. Hi, Triforce gang. I know uh, how much you love hearing about toilets and shit, and I wanted to email it. We are very immature, yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, I wanted to wait, tell you- Wait, wait, before you start here, I'm, I just want to say one thing about uh, my downstairs toilet, which has had to be mm. completely uh, ripped out and refurbished. I remember this, yes. Because of the, the water damage. We, are, uh, we have to get a close coupled toilet but we're now looking at getting a close coupled toilet with like a hide in the wall water uh, cistern. cistern the cistern yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and it's like this it's a, it's flat but it's quite big but it can hide in the mm. wall and it makes your toilet look like it's floating on the wall but it has to be wow. it has to be close coupled because it's a cloakroom bathroom and if the toilet is not close coupled it'll stick out too far and block the entranceway into the full bathroom question sounds great question is there easy access to the system like is there a panel that you can lift away to yes get to it? yeah because yeah. you just finish it right. with some sort of like cabinet or, or something you know like okay. you'd put a shelf but then you'd have it so that you could open lift the, the shelf cabinet up. and yeah. access the system right. when you need to because i was just worried because that's if anything breaks on a toilet, it's invariably yeah. some little arm or yeah, a little yeah. bubble. It's a little mechanism. Yeah, they, are, yeah. they are made of the cheapest components uh, exactly. you could ever they imagine. Break. And they're they sat break. in water the whole day, so exactly. they're corroding yeah. away. Yeah. Um, All right. So yeah. this is from Brandon. I wanted to tell you about my friend Luke, who poops in a weird way. Right. Uh, when he needs a poo, he takes all his lower clothes off. Yes, right. and this is common for kindergarten children to Indeed. to. This is a common thing that uh, younger children do when they go to the bathroom. Sometimes they completely declothe, and other times yep. they will just maybe take their pants completely well, this off. This is this is the case when taking a piss as well. Some people have to like get their whole cock and balls out. Other people just flop the cock out. Um, you see what I mean? <laughs> when they piss. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just like, I think, I think it's mostly just my cock that comes out. Not, not so much my balls, but I just do that thing, you know, like, cause when you're a guy and you do a stand up piss, you can just sort of, well, I wear, I wear a lot of track pants. I'll be honest with you guys. So, yeah. you know, 
the it's elasticated easy. waist. I can just pull it down slightly, get my tackle yeah. out, and start start pissing, albeit quite slowly these days. But I mean, it does eventually all come out. It depends. Um, Some people like try and poke their uh, cock through the Y front hole as well. And... I, I do that. I've done uh, that. I've done I, that I have like a couple of times. It's not it's not my go to, but it's at a, a push, I'll do it. It's a lot of faff. Yeah. Uh, but, but but this is this is this is a thing, right? Where he's obviously he he's he was. It's like it's like the ritual, right? It's like certain things you get used to trigger you and make you like it's a, well, the, the, make the, your body functions worse, by the work. Way. Oh, okay. Oh god. So when he needs to pee, he takes all his lower half clothes off and squats on the floor in front of the toilet. And when the poo is about to come out, he quickly gets up and sits on the toilet. I don't understand. Wow, that. that's mad. He says that is so correct, risky. He says it's the correct natural position for your body when pooping. Says how good it is because it makes him poop really quickly. He's not sat on the toilet for ages. Oh, on his phone I see. For 20 I minutes. see. I see. He's, and when he told okay. us about it. Me and the rest so, of our friends bantered with him and became a running joke. So, okay, so, this is a common thing with, it's true, some people have the little step. So if you have yes. problems pooping, you can get this little step which lifts your legs up so you're in more of a squatting <laughs> yeah. position. Right, right? right. I've tried it. I've tried yeah. it. And it works um, you, great. You, it, it, it does work great. You poo much more easily. Yeah, you do poo it much is, more it easily. It is a lot of strain on I, your knees. I don't like the process of frogging it on the floor and <laughs> no, then quickly, like that at all. quickly waddling over to I <laughs> Honestly, I'll I say, like if that. I found out that anybody was doing that in one of my bathrooms at my house as a I've guest got, i've got I some bad be, news for you sips i, um, I would be <laughs> dismayed but fortunately you're replacing that toilet now so you would be more dismayed by the conclusion which is that one time he was at his mate's house did this technique and obviously didn't get to the toilet in time there was a small bit of poo on the floor wow uh, and they just it was discovered by another toilet goer who no then, and then he uh, had to come and clean it up and they still no one thing, one thing, one thing that so. stuck with me uh throughout most of my travels uh the first time i ever went to um to france and used a public toilet they vary some of them are like space age self-cleaning automated whatever and then some of them literally just have uh floor pads for your feet and then a hole yeah. in the ground and you shit right into that hole this, this but maybe this maybe Japan this guy too, yeah. would uh would enjoy that he could go to france and just shit in a hole in the floor there were a couple there were a couple in japan with with a with, with a guy with a hose grips outside and he would go in and hose it down once you were done yeah, and yeah. sucked up but they, they do still yeah it's usable it's not i mean we've if you go to anywhere festivals holiday in places that are not it's fully touristified you'll just you'll this will happen right and you could do the hole in the floor because you could still get the s bend in the pipe work underneath the ground i think Honestly, it would just some be... of the some of the squatty ones are nicer than some of the, my friends yeah the, you just need to get rid of the, the smell stuff, really you know but mean? you could still put a bowl into the oh ground oh my god into a bowl and i went stuff. to, to i went to, i went yesterday to i don't want to say whose house i was at but I was at someone's house, and ben. I bet I can guess. Give me a couple of just a couple of clues, and I can guess. It was Ben. I guarantee you it was Ben. Yeah, because he mentioned ben. about the the miniatures game, right? They probably have been. Uh, okay. It wasn't Ben. It wasn't Ben. No, Ben's mm. anyway. And in, in this um in this house, there was uh, I went to the bathroom, and it, there was the, the, first of all, it was just it never never been cleaned in there. Clearly. Oh, this right. is Brian Rabs' house. It's Al Smithy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Brian. It's Brian Rabs' house. I'm not telling you. It. It's not Brian. It's not Rabs. It's not Al Smithy. But there was so there was no toilet roll, right? There was no soap, right? Oh, right. No, it's it's, oh, it's Al Smithy's house. There's, there's no there's, hot you water. You don't have to deny it. And, there's no hot um, water. <laughs> and there was no you... like no no way to dry your hands as well. So it was this like, isn't Harry's place. Harry's Harry's place is nice. I don't know, man. He's uh, he's like a young. He's a young guy who maybe left home too early, so, like didn't have the refined. It's not Harry's place. No, this has happened before, right? Like with Hat Films, definitely at their warehouse. Their warehouse toilet is a fucking disaster. But <laughs> yeah, but a warehouse <laughs> toilet is allowed to be. It doesn't but that matter. is yeah. um, that is you know I I I brought my own loo roll there, knowing that it was going to be a disaster area type thing. So I'm prepared for it, Jimmy. Nice. But like I I think like it's possible it wasn't their main toilet, mm. and I went off to do uh, a pee. Fortunately, I didn't need to do anything else because so I was like, oh my. God, but maybe there's like a second toilet that is more usable because uh, it was like the downstairs one, you know, under the stairs. Maybe they just forgotten it was there. God, I, maybe I'm the only person who's ever peed in it. Holy you know, crap. maybe I rediscovered it. Maybe it's is haunted. It, maybe it's Tom Bates. Maybe it's Tom Bates. It's not Tom perhaps, Bates. Um, oh, no. You're never gonna guess. We're not gonna we guess. We'll never gonna guess. guess. Right? Okay. All right. This is from this is from Gavin Figlesga. Uh One of your listeners wrote in about the Japanese prank Kancho. Remember the uh, yes. the fingers up the bum thousand years of death. 
I lived in a dorm in Japan with several 18 to 20 year old Japanese folk, and there was a public bath where some of us would hang out to relax. One night, me and a Japanese mate go in, and we're just shooting the shit. I started pulling my trousers off, bending down, arse sticking out, and then I feel it. The thousand years of death. He went full send. I couldn't walk right for a couple of hours. Oh my Turns out God. the lads had a bet on who could can show me first. Poor, poor when you Gavin. were naked? Holy shit, he struck. I assume so. He took the opportunity and he God, struck. God, you could have done some real damage with that. Like, you can't <laughs> be careful. It's very tender down there, you know? Well, mine is. I don't know. <laughs> don't just, <laughs> you're just a thousand years of death poke in there. You have to lube it up first. Yeah, anyway. Mine. Get some local um, anesthetic. It's fine, honestly. Right, recent, that's what recently. you've been having yeah. done. <laughs> can't really feel it, honestly. Good Lord. This is quite a dramatic mailbag today. Yeah, Holy it's a crap. Good one. I'm loving this. These are this is packed full of excitement. Oh, it's great. Um we we I've got a good one here about civil war reenactment, which is something we spoke about yes. previously. The, um, the conversation, if I recall, was we were saying uh we hope that if you do a civil war reenactment that if you get shot, you lay down and pretend to be exactly dead right. to make exactly it more right. realistic. That is that is exactly what he talks about. This is from Scott. Thank you, Scott. When I was growing up, so his parents were into it when I was growing up, but I thought you guys might find this interesting. They never got into a group, although they dress up as civilians right. and go camping in an era-appropriate tent. Sure. In the last episode, someone mentioned you'd want the guy you're shooting at to drop once shot. But from what I remember, that's not how it usually worked. Oftentimes, guys would get get shot when they'd get tired and needed a break. Oh, right. Reenactments on really hot days would typically result in high mortality rates because no one wanted to spend a lot of time running around in the sun in their full coats and gear. <laughs> My parents had a friend that played a surgeon. His operating table had a trap door in it, so a wounded soldier could hide their real leg, and he could amputate a fake one. He would put raw hamburger meat on the ends of the amputated limbs, so flies Holy would buzz around. Holy <laughs> shit, man. That is dedication. I mean... One reenactment that really stands out was recreating the burning of a bridge by the Union soldiers to stop the Confederates advancing. While the real bridge was over a river, the one they made for the reenactment would have cleared a small creek, but they did light it on fire and it was pretty cool. As the battle was winding down, we started to hear people yelling about a fire. Some of the embers of the bridge fire had landed on a reenactor's tent and it had caught on fire too. Fuck. The tents are, su are supposed to have a flame retardant on them, but for whatever reason this one didn't. While everyone is starting to gather around the new fire, a guy comes bursting out of the flamey tent kicking a wooden box. Turns out the box had all of that guy's gunpowder in it. Oh shit! Oh, God, Whoa. could have been a actual Civil War reenactment. Oh there for my a second, God! But... You wouldn't have needed yeah, the hamburger go. meat after that one. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is uh, this is one. Uh, this is a, a question. So I guess we could talk about this, and then and then that will generate some more emails. I'm sure. Uh, this is uh, Travis. I'm training to be a dancer at what I would consider a somewhat artsy, highbrow dance school in the UK. Sure. I have no clue as to whether any of you have an interest in dance, but I would love to hear your perception on what it is, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. I feel like uh, I feel I uh, with dance, I feel it, it it's it, it would be similar to being into like gymnastics or something like that, right? Like, uh, but you know, like the the type of training that you would need to do, right? Like. It, and then you'd have yeah. to do a lot of training around like whatever choreography you're doing like for the dance. But I feel like it would use a lot of the same sort of uh, fitness and muscle groups like aerobics and whatever, you know, like you'd have to do a yeah. lot of that shit all the time. I mean, it's all I, in my in my imagination. It's a lot of French terms for sort of set moves. Yeah. Certainly for like dancing on the stage and like musicals and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Because whenever you see that, I've seen TV shows and documentaries where they're like some dance school, whatever. It's always a, a guy, big guy in a leotard. Five, six, seven, eight, demi champ, demi champ, and left and left. Two, three, duck down, handshake, and turn and pivot and turn like that. Yeah, yes, I think that there would be thing. a lot of that, but I think you'd you'd have some good friendships too, right? There'd be a lot of oh. like nice camaraderie like oh, out I mean, of that. Well, yeah, but... look, I think let's let's not beat around the bush. I think people who do dance are hot. They present this aura of happiness. There's probably like. I think we. I think they're probably I, just happy to be I, so healthy I always and fit, hit, right? They're, they're super he, fit and healthy. Yeah, like, like, like. I think, I think dance is one of these things that actually is very human and natural and positive and gives you a lot of yeah. good like endorphins. And I yeah, think yeah. that we don't dance enough. And I think we're shy and embarrassed about dancing. And I've, I, it's not a regret, but I'm kind of jealous of people who 
do dance. I right? find now that I have three kids and I'm older, I am not ashamed of dancing at all. Like I will, oh, I all. will just yeah. fucking dance, man. Like you put uh, put a good tune on, and I'm I'm I'm. Up. I wish I Absolutely. danced more. I never yeah. danced. I guess like I was never at the clubs. I was never any in any dance. I got a question stuff. for you guys. I asked uh, chat yesterday. This is kind of related to dancing. You know, remember Ravishing Rick Rude from uh, wrestling? No. Yeah. Okay. He did that thing, and I guess like Chippendale. It, it seems to be a man thing to do when they're doing like uh, like a sexier dance. You put your hands. You put. Both your hands behind your head, and then you sort of rotate your pelvis around, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What the fuck is that? And why did it ever become popular or associated with like, like, like I said, like Chippendales, like or like male strippers or whatever? Like, who decided that this was a, a thing that people wanted to see or whatever? It's so, absurd. Let, let's imagine well, it's thrusting. It is, but but if, if it's you look weird. at that move, it, it's showing off everything. I first guess. Of all. Yeah. If you're naked from the from like the waist yeah, up. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure bodybuilders do it sometimes too. Right. Yeah. So you're showing off when you put your arms behind your head. It pumps up your biceps. Right. And you'll see all. You'll see the chest muscles. So it is the just it's is just flexed. a muscle showcase. This move. That and also the gyrating implies, huh? Hmm. Yeah. You know what this means. Well, but maybe that's what <laughs> women see when a man is having sex with them, right? That thrusting <laughs> motion. Maybe that's it's what more they're... of like a round motion, though. I can't imagine. Like, it's not like oh, a, much of a back and forth, right? You're, you're maybe sort of... that's what women see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's the idea, right? Like, yeah. That it's like it's like a, it's like a sexualized image of like a man thrusting. You, okay, like, but if you see somebody doing oh. that, do you think that that's sexy? I don't. I I just think it's. It's odd. Yeah, but you're not into dudes. You're not into dudes. I could be I mean... if they'd come up with a better move than that. <laughs> like that that move You'll just... have to sell me better than that, <laughs> yeah. Buster. If you're gonna turn me on, mister, you're gonna have you to do better a lot put better some work than in. this. I've seen this move before and it doesn't do it for me. What else have you got? Piss on my face. Let's try that. <laughs> Please. Piss on my face. <laughs> um, my, my impression of dance, I, I, I've been to a ballet, believe it or not. Mrs. F booked it. We all went. It was fucking awful. I tried not to sit arms folded looking miserable in the front row, but I did not off at one point. Mrs. F had to wake me up. It was fucking awful. Uh, it's just not for me. It's really yeah. not for me. Well, I mean, everybody no, else is having but a great time. I, I, so. I, think, I think dance has got a lot of ramifications. You know, what are we talking about? Country dancing in the village hall? Or are we talking well, about like line like dancing? Dancing on ice? What are we talking about? But Do you that, know what I mean? That's line more dancing. of a communal thing. Like, you can join in. Yeah. Like, if you look at what is it? Sadler's Wells is like the theater where they do dance shows and it's all like modern dance, interpretive dance, all that kind of yeah. stuff. To me, to me, a load of wank. But if you're into it, what about the enough, salsa? I mean, what about going to a, a, a yeah, ballroom? Yeah, no, I hate all the strictly come dancing, all of that wanky shit. I hate all Mrs. that. F, Mrs. F, Mrs. F really wanted us to do dance lessons, and I had to. I, I very rarely put my foot down. You had and to say, veto. I'm not. Yeah. I had to. I had to use the rare veto. You can't veto too much, or it's a piss take. Yeah. But occasionally we'll veto each other, and she's like, no, and I'm like, she's like, veto. I was like, okay, and I. I did. I vetoed. Do you think dance. that Cockney rhyming slam for veto would be Danny DeVito? I'm gonna dance. <laughs> no, because it has DeVito. the word veto. You use your it? Danny on on that. You use your Danny. <laughs> what? What? You'd say what is Danny DeVito rhyming slang for? Danny DeVito veto. That makes sense. Oh no. It has to. It has to not have the word in it. Oh, That's I the see. Whole point. Oh. So you would call it like hamburger? That would write hamburger mito Danny DeVito. Hamburger mito Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a real company, Lewis. Is. I was watching Tony the other day, saw that hamburger Mito on there. He, he means Danny DeVito. Does he or does he mean Vito? This is confusing. So, anyway, oh, you fuck. remember the value of a Vito is that you could scroll that away for a time when you've really upset her mm. and you can say, do you know what? I've booked her some dance lessons and she'll be like, oh my God, do you remember that I always wanted to do those? You know? I thought I would have to use my special reserve veto for a potential fourth child, but it turns out that my <laughs> wife is just like, no, we cannot have another one. Like, okay. is enough. Jeez. So I God. haven't had to use it. I, 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 I can safely say... If I'm allowed one veto, I still have it. I've never used a veto in my mm. entire 20 years of marriage. That's nice. What That's pretty good. Guy. Yeah. Wow. But I'm going to use it. Don't worry. One of these days, you know, like if if some shit comes up and I'm like, nah, the veto's coming out. Right. Well, let's uh, write in with examples of things that you've vetoed. Yeah. Um, 
Any any interesting threesome stories? Yeah. Please, uh, thank you to everyone that emailed in about Wisconsin. We're, we're done with that. Do not now, mail in about uh, p potentially fighting an animal to death, okay? Yeah, we don't care about that either. Also, uh, some of you have been sending in some really, really nice emails that are very detailed, and, and I, I have read them, but they are just too long. Uh, it would take about 10 minutes to read some of these emails. So if your email is like that long, just think, because uh, I'm, I'm worried some of you have wasted your time. They're, they're not going to get rid of We just want them bite size. Think tater tots. Yeah, a paragraph or two is fine. But yeah. some of these are literally, I have to scroll like two screens to read the whole email. That's too much. It's too much. That it's is too much. much. Yeah. It's like an essay. Yeah. And I, I get it. You've got a lot to say. I'm, it's great that you guys are enjoying the mailbag episodes. I think we really enjoy doing them. But please, they're a little long. Some of them are just a little too long. And some of them are way too long, so please trim them down if you can. Right. Okay, that's our that's our, what, right. So send us emails, but make them shorter. No, yeah, just, yeah. just. I mean, the, the, the ones we read out this week, I thought were perfect. Perfect okay. length, nice. Yeah. But some people are, especially some topics we get onto. This is like the specialist subject for some people, and they're very passionate about it, and I love that. But please, these emails are never getting read out, and I feel terrible. But it is literally. <laughs> Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of words, and it's just not going to make it. I'm sorry. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for thank you. That was a great podcast. I thought that was. A good it was one. good. Thank you for that's, all the emails. Mailbags fantastic. are always so God, good. I enjoyed the shit, shit out of that one. Yeah. You guys are great. I'm, just keep we, it shorter next time. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, <laughs> just uh, get it trim it down a little bit. A little bit of editing. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. I think it's a reasonable request, and also that would increase the chances of getting your email read out, which is why you sent it in. Well, thank you, everyone. See you next week. We love you. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Right. Bye. See you later, bye. bye.